Hey everyone, Melissa here with The Creative Season. Remember that trio of tulips we painted together a few weeks ago? Well, I really felt like it needed some more work. It just wasn't quite finished. So I added a couple of layers of paint and pen and I wanted to share with you how I work on my paintings when it feels like there's a little bit of something more that they need and show you some easy ways for those pieces that you're not quite thrilled with and they feel like they need a little bit more but you don't know what to do. You can try adding these layers. I really feel like it gives a lot of depth. So I look forward to painting with you in this short video. Hi everyone. Okay, so we're back for something really short today. As I was working on this and playing with it, you can see I've added in more color to the tulips. And I just wanted to do this short video today. If your paintings are looking a little bit water stained in places and you're just wanting to add in some additional detail, uh, make it clean it up a bit. I'm just gonna show you how I work through that with these tulips and create a little bit more of a less, uh, you know, more of a fine, a finished look if you're looking for that. So I'm just gonna show you what I do. I'm gonna take um, a little bit of Micron pen and I'm just lightly going to start doing some gentle sketching over some of the areas that I wanna create a little bit more definition. Maybe where I see that there is a bit more of a, um, just again, some water stains. This pen is actually starting to go out. So let me actually grab another one. They do wear out over, over time for sure. And I always have a handful around me. So let me grab this other one. This is a bit of a smaller one, but it should be just fine. Oh, it is. And I'm just gonna, again, clean up some of the edges. I think what I wanna do too, is I wanna create some additional lines like up here. This tulip had been out. Remember there was a couple, they've opened up a bit since we last painted together, but they were a little bit more of delineated petals. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add in, again, some sketching here. I'm also gonna add in some lines on my stems. I'm not making these too hard of lines of sketches. I'm just going in pretty lightly. I'm going and adding in again some lines, showing the detail. And uh, this is all gonna actually disappear a bit because I'm gonna do just a little bit more painting over it. I have taken off my masking tape. I thought I was done, but then I decided to play a little bit more. You could certainly retape it. However, we're not putting a lot of water on it. You can see that water stain area right in there, and I'll bring it in even a little bit closer so you can see that there where I'm going in. And I want to, I want to soften that up just a little bit. I also had just the area where the watercolors seem to just blend in where you can't tell the leaves from the stems. And so I wanna make a change to that. So I'll back out in just a minute, but just so we can focus right here on that area, I'm gonna take a bit of yellow and get it pretty. This is yellow medium, cadmium yellow medium. And I'm gonna come right in here and I'm just gonna work over that area. And you can see where the watercolor actually picks up a bit and it starts moving into the green. And I'm just gonna come back up and you see where that water stained area starts disappearing, right? Isn't that lovely? All of a sudden, it's not so water stained anymore. I'm gonna bring it back and I'm gonna grab, rinse off that. I'm gonna pick up some green and I think I have a little bit of green left with some purple and I'm gonna move that right over here where there might be a little bit of shadowing where the tulip head is very gently leaning over the stem. And even down in here, this guy, this leaf down here, it would have be more in shadow, right? So I wanna create an additional, some lines, some shadowing, especially if you've done that first layer of paint and your green faded quite a bit, I know mine did. So just adding in some darker area, we mix just a tad of purple dioxazine purple with the green. We had also mix a little bit of that purple with the yellow to create some shadowing as well. So again, you can all even see where that darker area helps the whole thing start to pop a bit, right? I'm gonna come back in here. And once again, right down on this guy too, moving in some darker area. It's a beautiful spring day. It's been quite um, getting cool at night, but in the daytime it's getting up to 60s, 70s, 
and just really lovely weather. Perfect weather for playing outside. There's children out there right now where they were a minute ago. I've got a bit of a water stain right there. So once again, I'm gonna grab actually some yellow too and create a little bit lighter. I want this one to show that difference in leaves. I'm gonna actually add quite a bit of yellow and just let it wash over the whole thing. The micron pin will um, water away a little bit too, and that's fine. I'm gonna add it right in there. See, I had some excess paint that I kind of pulled up, and I'm using that moisture of my brush just to pull it. Pull, pull, pull. I grab a little more yellow. Down and away. Going even right up against those lines. And I am gonna leave this one with a bit more yellow. I see that more in the um, in the beautiful stem. And over here, I'm just gonna add once again a bit more yellow, showing off that beautiful differentiation of colors, even in the stems and in this one too. And that looks really nice. And also, it really kind of adds to the contrast, right? And contrast clarifies. I always like to keep that in mind as I'm adding in colors and creating a contrast. I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow right in here to this one just to make it pop a bit. And over here in this tulip petal, I want it really that yellow to pop. And then, then this one right here, I'm gonna go back and grab some of that orange, mix the cadmium orange with a bit of that pink so again, it's really, really bright, a nice, warm, beautiful spring color. And just gonna move that right all the way down here, creating that absolutely gorgeous tulip. And I'm gonna go a little bit of an excess right out here. And I'm just about finished here. I think this, again, just a couple of details. Those de that little few details can really make a big difference, right? So now that I'm looking at it, it just looks a lot more finished. And again, if you like a more watery watercolor look, you may just enjoy how it looked at the beginning. However, if you just felt there were some, there's just some things that you wanted to change. You just didn't feel you want a little bit finished, especially if you have a bit of water staining going on. I'm gonna do a few more splatters up here because they're fun. And then over here on the side, I'm even gonna go on the leaves. And this is just a little bit of, a little extra. I don't do splatters everywhere. I usually leave like one side blank. And two, if you are thinking ahead of time for, as a gift for somebody, um, I'll come back in a bit so you can see the splatters. You can easily, you know, maybe write a verse or a poem within these areas, really personalize it for other people. You can see right here where when the splatters get on the wet paint, it will smear a bit. So what I do when that happens is I'm just gonna take my brush and it's just wet, there's no color. And I'll go ahead and just smooth that out and let the color just move around in there, just like that. All right, you guys, this is just a really short one this week. Again, I wanted just to show you how you can add those final details and you can go through all of your paintings and do this. Sometimes I will have a, a small stack of paintings where I've been doing a lot of work and that initial laying down of paint and I start seeing things that I just wanna change. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know below if you like a more finished look in your watercolors, if you really enjoy um, the looser, more just watercolor by itself. I'd love to hear. And once again, too, if you start to notice too, like for example, I did some pen work here, but not so much over here, you might even wanna let it dry. I might go back and do a little bit more pen work just so they're all uniform. Um, again, make sure you let the painting completely dry before using your Micron pen. Otherwise that Micron pen will not work anymore. Okay, you guys, I'll see you next week. Have an absolutely beautiful Wednesday.